Hi, and welcome to the Hidden Secrets to Health. I'm your host, Christina Cole, a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner and certified health coach. And today we're going to be talking about CBD and hemp and really kind of digging into some of the history, talking about um, how hemp is useful in a sustainable manner and why it's really important um, as a society that we start using more sustainable products. And then a little bit about um, the endocannabinoid system and how it's really sort of the chemical communication in our body, similar to the way that hormones talk down a hormone pathway. So my guest is Chelsea Newman. Welcome, Chelsea. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So you've been in the business with um, health coaching for 10 years, and um, you also have been doing CBD for a number of years as a grower, and now really as an entrepreneur and helping other people learn about the benefits of CBD. Yeah, I, um, I've had a health coaching practice for about 10 years now, and I, I originally started in skincare, actually, and Chinese medicine, and really energetic, and I you know I'm very... in into products. I vet products from around the world and CBD was something that really excited me about three years ago now. So I got, thought I was going to be a millionaire and grow it on my own, which is not how it ended up playing out. Um, nor was it like that fun at the time, but it was a really good learning experience. And so I really got to dig my heels into this emerging industry and see kind of all aspects of it. As you know, Christina, like even when you're looking at nutritional supplements, there's a lot of companies that don't have a lot of integrity and um, there's a lot of misinformation and there's a lot of people getting ripped off and kind of quite frankly, ingesting yeah. things that aren't that good for you. So CBD, because it's such a cash crop is something I became really passionate about educating and about. And I had the pleasure of getting involved with uh, Medical Marijuana Inc. about a year and a half ago now. And they're the first publicly traded cannabis company. They created the testing standards so definitely got to partner with the top company in the space, which was a game changer for me with this product. Awesome. So um, let's dig into a little bit about the history and what's happened in the United States with regards to hemp, marijuana, cannabis, like it kind of all got lumped into the same category. Um, we a little bit threw the baby out with the bathwater as that saying goes. Um, and there's a lot of politics behind that. So let's just talk about, you know, like, how hemp came to America and when we decided to get rid of it. Yeah, so it's really interesting because when you say cannabis, you immediately think marijuana, but cannabis is actually the family of the plant that hemp is a part of. So you've got cannabis and within cannabis, you have marijuana and you have hemp. Um, so we used to be required to grow hemp. In Up until 1937, farmers were required to grow it. It was how they paid their taxes when they grew hemp and linen. It was in the pharmacopoeia, so it was the base of all of our medicines. It's been used since the beginning of time. If you look back at Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, they will always reference cannabis. So what happened around 1937, which is really interesting, um, Henry Ford created a hot car out of hemp, and he managed to fuel it out of hemp. And there was a couple major industries that were really going up against this product at the time. And there was the reefer madness that started. There was a, an influx of marijuana. So in 1937, the Marijuana Tax Act got passed. And when they passed that, they lumped hemp in with marijuana at the same time. So it made marijuana and cannabis really expensive to grow because they were taxing it. So it basically got removed from the pharmacopoeia. It got removed from our diets. Like my grandma remembers using hemp products for period cramps. Um, and it was interesting because, yeah, farmers were required to grow it during times of war because they made all these parachutes out of it, ropes. Hemp has so many implications beyond CBD. Like, it's a major player in the medicine cabinet, but it can actually replace all plastics. You can make clothing out of it. You can make paper out of it. The Declaration of Independence is written on hemp paper. So right. there's, I think the yeah. flags were all made from hemp, right? So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, so it's this, it's this plant that really kind of intimidates a lot of big industry. So a lot of people will talk about conspiracy when you get involved in like cannabis laws and marijuana laws and stuff. But when you really look at it, it's, it doesn't seem like so much conspiracy. It just seems like it financially made sense for a lot of these giant industries like cotton, um, oil, petroleum, plastic to kick this plant out because it grows in 90 days. Like a tree, for example, will take 10 years to grow, but it grows in 90 days. It's the only plant on that planet that can replace all fossil fuels. Um, so it's really like this phenomenal plant that we have that we haven't been able to grow for so long. 
And then when the Tax Act or the Farm Bill Act passed um, in December of this year, or night of 2018, we were able to grow hemp and now it can cross state lines because before hemp wasn't able to cross state lines. But there's this whole gray area now, like how much you can grow, the licenses that you need to grow, what you can actually do with the product. And hemp is actually kind of, it's an interesting plant because it can become dangerous if you're ingesting it. So it's really phenomenal for cleaning soil. It has this special root structure and sunflowers have the same root structure, but you plant it and it sucks all the heavy metals, molds, toxins out of the soil and into the, the plant. So it's really good. But if you're ingesting it, that's when we have a problem. So like it can make building material. It's um, antimicrobial, antibacterial. It won't burn. So if you build a house out of hemp, it's phenomenal. But if you're going to be ingesting it, you need to be, there's two different qualities of hemp. Really. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the great thing about CBD is, or, you know, this in a CBD oil, whether it has THC in it or not, is that it helps pull those same things out of your body, which is why it's so healing right? But if you're pulling it out of the soil and putting it into your body, then whatever it is you're trying to heal is not only not going to heal, but it's going to get worse because now you're dumping in toxic chemicals. You're dumping in the heavy metals, right? Yeah. So that's when it comes back to that quality is so important and where it's grown and what's been happening in that soil over the last decade, because that's all going into that plant. Mm -hmm. And you can grow different um, like degrees of hemp. Like you can grow hemp that has very little CBD in it and it's really phenomenal for industrial purposes. But in order to get like a medicinal plant, it requires a certain type of seed. It requires certain type of growing conditions. So that one's treated more like a medicine and then you can have one that's more like, hey, I'm going to make a Porsche out of it. And it's not, right. as, it's not as important you're growing it for the fiber. So a lot of people too, they're purchasing hemp oil and um, there's a lot of companies that will claim that it's CBD oil, but when you look at the back, it just says hemp extract. So it's kind of like growing an orange and it has really little vitamin C in it, which we can all, we all know can happen. So right. be aware that like the growing of this plant can be vastly different. It's like with any plant, um, if you, for example, get lavender from Bulgaria or France, it will have different properties than if you were to get it from America. So, right. So I think that's really things. important for people to know because there's already confusion about whether or not CBD oil has THC in it or if it's going to get you high, right? Yeah. And then there's like this other side. So it's really like three different things because then there's the hemp oil that has nothing in it. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, doesn't have any of the healing qualities. Doesn't have any of the medicinal qualities. It's it's like it has omega three olive oil. Yeah, yeah, which which does have you know some. Uh, it's kind of like the fresh pressed juice of the plant. Um, so it's not bad for you if it's a clean product and it's got right. omega threes and stuff. But it shouldn't it cost have you. That. It shouldn't be costing you a lot of money. Like CBD, it costs a lot for a reason. Um, hemp oil should just be like a very minimal product. I remember it was one of the first, when I started getting into nutrition, my first cleanse that I ever did changed my life. But one of the salad dressings I was making was with hemp oil. And I believe that the container of it, I was buying from Whole Foods, it was like roughly $12 or something. It yeah. Should and I've used like when I went gluten-free back when it was not that popular <laughs> <laughs> and there weren't a lot of products, um, I was gluten and dairy free. And so I would get hemp milk Yep. Because it was, you know, I, I, I tried them all, but I used hemp milk whenever it was something that was supposed to be sort of a, more of a cream type of a milk, right? So something that you would use, like if you're doing heavy whipping cream or something like that for whatever you're making, I would use the hemp milk because it just has that thicker quality. Yeah. And in Ayurvedic medicine, like traditionally the turmeric milks and things, they did use, um, they would use cow's milk because in India they do use a lot of cow's milk. It's considered sacred, but they also used hemp milk at the same time. That makes sense because that's what I always think of it is sort of along the lines of coconut milk, really, mm -hmm. with that thicker quality. Yeah, and it's got more essential fatty acids like almond milk is, you know, almond milk is almond milk and like rice right. milk. It's like water. I'm like what? Are yeah, we doing? yeah, yeah. So bad. <laughs> yeah. I know. I said I tried them all. <laughs> yeah, there's so a, have you ever had tiger nut milk. Things. What's that? Tiger nut milk. Have you ever heard of that? No. 
it's That's not it's um it's a special nut that comes from somewhere in south america and it's really thick and creamy too and that's like a new super food oh. it's got a funny name <laughs> yeah yeah right <laughs> <laughs> all right cool so one of the things that i looked up when uh it came to the history was yeah that when you came over from the united states came over to the united states like before we were the united states um you signed a contract basically that when you got land, that one quarter of the land had to go to growing hemp and one quarter of the land had to go to, or one quarter of an acre, sorry, had to go to growing linen. And that's really how you paid for um, your property on an annual basis. That was your sort of your tax, your, your contribution. And so when you think about that, those farmers were using all of those plants as well, right? So we were able to um, use the seeds and use the, just overall use the entire plant. And I think that's one of the things that's really beautiful about hemp. And that kind of leads us into that sustainability model is that, you know, you could, you could drive a car with hemp oil and hemp gas, which is what the Model T originally was designed for. Yeah. Um, and you can also cook with this oil you can you can use it you know in your salad dressings and different things that were more of a cold oil you can use it as a facial lotion i mean it's pretty amazing all the different ways so now we can build an entire plant i mean you can do the um, structure with hemp you can do the flooring with hemp mm -hmm. and in fact um I think I was looking at replacing some of the floors in our house and one of the options was these hemp boards. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and so I was just like, oh, and I was really surprised by it just because all of a sudden um, it's come out. And I know other countries have been using hemp forever. I think, I think China's the number one exporter, not saying that I want any Chinese hemp, but <laughs> the number one exporter of hemp and they've been growing it for hundreds of years. Yeah. And it's, it doesn't really burn. So like, it's a very safe material to make your homes with. It's really amazing for developing countries. There's just like my business partner, Brittany and I keep joking that we want to be the Oprah of hemp cars and be like, you get a hemp car. Like, oh yeah. Why, why do we make a Tesla when you can just make it out of hemp? Like it'd be so much easier. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just, and you know, I always say it like, every plant is a teacher, but as in every crowd, there are a few loud mouths and hemp is definitely one of those. And it's it's no secret, like it's been pushed back, but it's written about in the Bible. It's written about in the Vedas. It's written about in every single sacred text. You know, you have a few plants that are frequently put in these texts and it's fascinating that this plant has been kicked out and now come back in. And everyone thinks CBD is this new miracle thing. I'm like, no, it's probably the oldest thing that we've been working with. And when you well, talk about people being required to grow it, another thing in the United States was that animals were eating it. Like, animals are eating it all the time and you are what you eat eats. So essentially if you're having, we're talking all about grass fed beef and things like that now, cause we know that they're higher in omega threes. But back in the day, these animals used to be eating hemp and they would just, it's a weed. They would stumble upon it and they would munch on it. Yeah. I, I remember I wrote down, I don't know where I wrote it down. Um, that it's like fiber, feed, food, um, there were like two, two other things that were like totally commonly used. Clothing was a big one. Yeah. Oh, here it is. It's um, food, feed, fiber, and fuel. Yeah. Four Fs. The four Fs. <laughs> and all the yeah. industries are like, eh, fuck. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. Because, because, and you can see why if you're a big business, if you're way, if you're going to control the world, you don't want this plant involved because if you have everyone tied to petroleum, if you have everyone tied to pharmaceuticals, then, um, you, you know, you can grow hemp in your backyard and, yes. you know, and it's like, and if we had continued to grow hemp in this country, then pretty much everyone would know how to use it and how to process it. Right. And it wouldn't be, it's like, you probably would just grow some and like you go down to your local hemp processor and mm -hmm. turn in your hemp and and whatever and it makes like really really soft clothing um which i'm really impressed with and it's kind of like the other thing is is that you know cotton which is what we decided to to glamorize and uh is it sucks in like all of your 
bacteria and it just sort of hangs out there. Whereas hemp is antimicrobial, antibacterial. So it sort of wicks it away from your body. So, you know, if you're, again, so if you're having a situation where there's like um, some type of an outbreak or there's a war and you need to like stem a bleeding or something, you're going to want to grab something that's hemp that's going to wick away some of that um, bacteria and stuff versus, you know, using a cotton pad, which is what we use, that yeah. holds it in. Yeah. So it's really, um, some of that stuff's fascinating to me that we just made sort of the choices that we made or who made the choices for us um, because it could be so much more sustainable. Yeah. I've always found it, you know, cotton is one of the most heavily sprayed Pest, uh, pesticide sprayed substances that we have in the world. And they also, you know, there's so many microplastics going into our clothing now, which are going into the ocean. And it's really like a very sad sort of food. But I saw a commercial, it was not so long ago, I haven't seen it recently. Um, there was a commercial running for just cotton. And there was also a commercial running for just dairy. And I was like, this isn't brand associated. Like, what industry is pushing for this? And ultimately, these cotton industries, these dairy industries push for it. And it would be such a shame for us to like, we need a hemp industry to be pushing for that and like bringing the plant back to where it was. Um, and that's why I was really excited to partner with Canaway and Medical Marijuana Inc. Because there are a lot of companies doing CBD out there. I'll tell you, there's a lot of companies not doing it well. And there's a lot of companies that have no ethics around it. But the really big picture is that this is a like a full spectrum plant that can do full spectrum things. So we have the gold standard of CBD, but we're looking at cannabis as the whole, like what can this family of plants actually do? What a shame would it be if we had literally just made citrus illegal? Like everyone was dying of scurvy and all they really right. needed was vitamin C. And if we'd done the same thing to citrus, we would be, we would have a huge industry missing. So it's kind of like that. Yeah. And I think it's so important that we, that, you know, we're in a time where, um, you know, we have so much decay for lack of a better word around, and we have like these fire seasons, right? So for the people in Northern California who lost their homes in these fires up in paradise and in, um, Redding and all this stuff, like bringing in a hemp manufacturer, to refurbish homes in those areas, that seems like a no-brainer, right? I mean, I don't because, know how it would withstand like a California wildfire your home, but I, I think it would do better than wood. Well, it certainly would do better than what happened, right? Yeah. I mean, it just yeah. like tore through and I'm like, those are pretty exceptionally hot fires because of that. But if every time it was jumping homes, it was coming into contact with something that doesn't readily burn, yeah. It would just slow it down tremendously, and um, and that's part of the problem is that it just was it just was jumping from house to house to house, and um, you know they had like like fire tornadoes which I've never even heard of before. No. <laughs> like I'm like wow that's I don't even know what you do with that. The world is getting apocalyptic. I keep joking. It's getting apocalyptic, but I shouldn't. Joke. I know it is. Oh, no, <laughs> when you look at California sometimes though, you think I'm like oh god. Right. I kind of look around and Canada's having all those bad fires right now. So yeah. I just, you know, it's like, uh, let's get some hemp homes in these, in these places. Yeah, and let's and just bring black, you know, more plants. These like our ecosystem is out of whack with us removing a lot of the things that we're removing. And, and this is just one plant that really, it's so miraculous. Like, why are we not growing it? And you can't even get high off of hemp. Like number right. one, no one yeah, if you had a forest of that growing up in Northern California and it burned, it's not going to get the whole community high. Does that happen <laughs> in NorCal? It happens in Hawaii. I remember this big drug bust went on and then the DEA put everything in the lava tube and like everyone got stoned on the oh gosh, That's hysterical. He wasn't yeah. thinking. <laughs> uh, or they were, I don't know. I guess they were, the cops were, or the DEA was flying over and one of the guys is like, I feel really funny. And they realized they were all stoned and they're like... <laughs> So yeah, I mean, you can't get, I mean, I'm not here to say that marijuana is wrong. Like, I don't think anyone's, I think alcohol is way worse. I think we'd all yeah. be amiss to, to say that, but CBD and hemp, you can't get high off of it. And there is, you know, there's a lot of people who are abusing medical cannabis at this point, but there is a huge reason for it to be there medicinally. Mm -hmm. And CBD people are also is, abusing opioids. People are also abusing alcohol. People are also abusing um, vaping. 
yeah, know, and, the, you know, I, you, and I have, are. you and I have talked about this, but there is conspiracy that follows the whole hemp thing. But um, right in the Congressional Library in 1937, the American Medical Association, so you can go read it right there. They specifically asked for hemp not to be removed from our medicine cabinets and not to be taxed because they said that the introduction of the Marijuana Tax Act was in direct response to the introduction of opioids. So opioids came in, they knew it was going to be a major industry. If you look at any country in the world, it's very well documented, this is not conspiracy, that we go in and we destabilize using opioids. We've addicted multiple cultures to it at the same time. So we knew the power of what that was going to do. That was how we were destabilizing countries during war times. And so this product, CBD, has a lot of implications when it comes to pain. It has a lot of implications around addiction. And so it's written right there in the Congressional Library. Um, so that's really, you know, and hemp has the power, CBD has the power to really treat some, some really intense PTSD, some really intense pain conditions. We're studying more, we're learning more and more about it every day, but it's one of the only things you can safely add to an opioid regimen. We don't really have products like that on the market at this point. It's like Suboxone and Methadone, and these are incredibly dangerous products that no one and should- And addictive in their own right. Yeah, they can kill you. Yeah. Um, hemp can't kill you. So it just seems common sense. You know, there is one synthetic form of a CBD that was created, it's called Epidiolex. It was approved for children with epilepsy. Um, and it has, it did kill one little girl and there were some really intense side effects. So I'm like, you know, plants are really wise. We've messed with a lot of them. We do a lot of different things with plants that we shouldn't do. And this one is one, I think we just need to respect it, look at it and study it for what the potentials are. Yeah. Well, the fact that we find a plant that does the job and then, but you can't, um, you can't claim it, right? You can't, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You can't um, trademark it. So pharmaceutical companies then mimic the plant using chemicals and to try to create the same healing quality. And it just doesn't work. I've been watching this really amazing series called The Remedy, and it's all about herbal medicine and ancient herbals and, and using them. And they did actually talk about um, CBD and its benefits in using it when you have cancer and when you have a um, variety of other ailments. And, and they mentioned that there is this synthetic form. Um, but it's like, why would you, you need to go, so aspirin is dangerous for you, but you can go get white willow bark and it's not dangerous for you. So every time we try to copy a plant and turn it into a pharmaceutical so that we can be trademarked, so that we can charge money, and then we illegalize the nature's version of it, it's, it's really upside down. Yeah, it's really, really. And dangerous. Yeah. This is how we're harming people. This is why we have a chronic health problem in the, in, around the world is because we're not um, getting back to nature. We're not using the, the gifts that we're given we're trying to replicate them and make money off of them. Um, and that's something, you know, that's something that's happening with CBD too. And so finding a really good reputable company that is coming from the right place, whose focus is really on helping people and helping society, right? So it's not just helping people health wise, but it's helping us as a society get back to where we need to be. And I think that's a really important um, point and something that we need to take into consideration as a society as well is, is putting our money, um, if we vote with our money. So putting our money where it counts. I think that's really important. I completely agree. And, you know, it's, I, we have a team of CBD educators now we call them our hemp educators. And really there's just so much, much misinformation. So if you're an advocate of hemp, you're just letting people know like, Hey, cannabis is not what you thought it was. It's not this, terrible, scary thing. Um, and it's just, you know, bringing this, giving a little love to this plant medicine as well, being a little hemp shaman. <laughs> <I like it>. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the last things I really wanted to touch on is um, the endocannabinoid system. And I think that um, it's new, newly discovered, not new in the body. It's been there forever, yeah. but it's really only come to light probably in the last three years. And it's something that I've been trying to explain to people on how that messaging system works, right? So when you think about your hormone pathways, you know, it's sort of like you could, if you, if you envision the body and you kind of see like this electrical circuit, 
that runs through the body. So there's a chemical pathway that travels right along next to that same pathway. And that's really what the endocannabinoid system is. It's like this chemical communication system inside our body. And um, so CBD is a chemical that travels on there and kind of works in the form of an adaptogen. Yeah. So can you talk to, to that just a little bit? Yeah. So in most layman's terms, we, food is a communicator, plant or communicator. So really all they're doing, I look at them like little sergeants and they come in and they say, hey, you need to do this and you need to do that. So the endocannabinoid system, it's a system in our body and we have receptors all over the body. It was discovered in 1990 and it was actually discovered by a man who was researching the runner's high. So the runner's high, you create this, um, this compound called anandamide. And anandamide is what's considered an endogenous cannabinoid. So it's a chemical compound that we produce in our bodies naturally. And ananda comes from the Sanskrit word bliss. So this is like your bliss molecule. If you guys have ever experienced the runner's high, this is you know, what's being created. Um, so he was studying this and he found the endocannabinoid system and he realized this is the body's largest self-regulatory system. So it governs your sleep, your hormones. Um, it's basically like the master computer of not your brain, but of your body where your brain is telling, it's getting told how to like come back into balance. So we have a few plants in the world that we call adaptogens. And so what that means is they go in and instead of being like, sergeants they're fixers so they go in and they say oh this this platoon is out of balance and this is how it's going to get back into balance so it's a very wise very gentle teacher to your body so hemp is one of those you have things like ashwagandha as well so it goes in and what it does for everyone's body is going to be really different so when you're talking about regulating hunger for example sometimes you have over hunger or you have under under hunger cbd is one of those molecules that'll go in and it'll dress either one of those and it'll nudge your body to come back into balance naturally. So it's not ailment specific in that you put CBD in and it cause, cause and effect. It's that it's feeding these empty buckets of your body, which really we think at this point is allowing the electrical system to communicate better. And it's allowing your body to come back into balance naturally. So adaptogens have a, you know, they're a wonderful thing to be taking because they're really just protecting you from what's going on. And it's just you coming back into balance. So the endogenous so cannabinoid system. Something, it's helping to remove that as well, correct? Sorry, what? With you, let's say you have an over full bucket. Yeah. Starts, Which, well, you're not going to have an over full bucket of cannabinoids at this point because we haven't had No, I just mean like as it goes through your system, exactly. when it comes into contact with things that you're, you know, you have your empty buckets and then you're going to have your over full, right? Yeah, your so, cortisol, right? your stress hormone. Right. When you start having insulin resistance, um, I was reading a study about how it really helps with getting that um, resistance under control so that you can process sugars that come into your body appropriately. Yes. Um, that's something that I struggle with. And also if like, let's say you have estrogen dominance, it helps export some of the extra estrogen out of the body. Yeah. And the way that I like to envision this is so for in, with insulin resistance, it's something I stuff, struggled with too. It's what got me into you know, my health journey, I had polycystic ovarian, <laughs> yeah. uh, which they tell you can't be fixed. It's totally not true. It's like, you can totally work with it with diet and different things. But the way I describe CBD and these adaptogens is you've got this cell. And for example, with insulin resistance, your glucose isn't really going into it properly. It's just like a, a nightclub that's full already. And the bouncers are like, Hey, I'm not letting anyone in. Right. And so CBD just goes in and it creates like it just rewires the things and everything calms down and it's like, oh, cool, I can use that glucose properly or I can stop producing too much insulin. And it's, yeah, it's going to do some really cool things for the body, whatever it is that you need. And um, Christina and I, we were talking right before this and you were saying you were feeling a little bit sleepy in the morning after taking your CBD, but you think it's what your body needs. So 10% of people feel, they'll say like drowsy is how the companies have to I address it. But really, when I look at those people, I'm like, you're just so sleep deprived that this is slowing your cortisol levels down and it's allowing you to actually catch up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it'll nudge you back into balance and what it does for everyone's going to be really different. Yeah, it's, um, it's a really amazing plant. And I really appreciate you coming on the on the show today and talking about it because I feel like there is a lot of misinformation. It's also plain. Mm -hmm. 
um, if there's a lot of misinformation, there's a lot of not really good understanding. Um, I know for me in the past, like week or two weeks, I've probably gotten an email a day talking about hemp or CBD in some fashion, like Thrive Market sent out some information. Full script just sent out uh, an email talking about it. Um, it was talked about in my functional medicine school. It's talked about on this remedy um, show that I've been watching that really talks about herbals. So, you know, it's, it's more and more information is coming out, but I also think it's really overwhelming. And just being able to listen to people who have been studying what it does and how it works is such a gift. And it makes it so much easier for most people who they just want to like, turn on a podcast and listen to something and get some education or get some humor or hear a story. And, um, that's such a great, that's a, that's the old way of learning, right. It's through storytelling. So I appreciate you coming on and sharing your story. Yeah. And yeah, the last thing I'd love to leave, leave listeners with is just like you said, everyone's, everyone's talking about it and just be careful. Like do not go buy this stuff from your gas station. Do not go, honestly, don't even buy it at your health food store. Like there's a lot of things that I wouldn't buy at health food stores at this point. Totally. Um, be very careful. There's 13 companies in the world that got the hemp certification. Look for those. The company we work with specifically, Canaway, which we can link to, um, has a soil to sale promise. So you can scan a QR code. You can see who planted it. You can see every step of the way how much CBD is actually present. No heavy metals, molds, toxins. And even if you look at these companies, sometimes they're saying, oh, we third-party triple lab test. And then when you look at their triple lab test, it'll say, no molds, visually checked. I'm like, you're not going to visually see a mold. Right. So you yeah. have to do your due diligence with this product at this time. It's not something that's safe to just be taking from anywhere. It's honestly not even safe for you to be taking it um, if you're relying on it medicinally from someone who's grown it that you know personally, because you don't know how many milligrams are in it. So it's a product that's going to develop dramatically. Uh, the one we work with is written on the PDR and in 11 countries, it's written as a prescription and reimbursed by insurance. And there's no other CBD that's doing that right now. Um, but yeah, just don't go buying it from any old place. You'll likely right. be wasting money, number one. And number two, you'll probably be putting something really harmful into your body when you're trying to do good. Right. And for those of you that are self-medicating with gummies, which are awesome, that is not at all the same thing as taking a CBD oil. No. So that is just self-medicating like you would with a glass of wine, and I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah. But if you're looking for the health benefits, you really need to be using a CBD oil. Yeah. So I just wanted... like a lot of people eat these CBD gummies, and when you actually test the gummy, there's no CBD present. We do, with the company we work with, have um, a vape and a gum, because one of the things you want CBD to do is bypass the liver. Yeah, gum yeah. is obviously much more socially acceptable. There is a lot of medicinal benefits to a vape if you get a clean product, if it doesn't have any binders, waxes, fillers in it. And I was not of that mindset before I started studying it. So do your due diligence, look into that. But the gum is actually a really good place for people to start who maybe need some immediate relief if they're experiencing anxiety or acute bouts of pain, they can um, experiment with that as well. That's awesome. That's good to know. Yeah. yeah, but don't if you have sugar in your product that's supposed to be medicinal, it's not medicinal anymore. If it's a Sour Patch Kid with CBD in it, I can tell you it's not good for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bad Sour it Patch. It probably tastes good. It probably tastes good. <laughs> yeah, bad Sour Patch. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, there's many different forms of CBD you can take. Some people respond better to the capsules. Some people respond better to the oils. My favorite way to start people is a combo pack of a topical, an oil, and a uh, capsule. And you start at 50 milligrams, regulate that system, and then you can go down. And a lot of people will talk about bioavailability of CBD. They do this thing called nanotechnology. It's you tween the product when you do that, which you would know, Christina. And the way that they do it is it really, it's using an antifreeze and there's obviously no safety data if they're using an antifreeze. So I'm pretty sure that there's like a TV show about how somebody killed somebody with antifreeze. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it I says was, right on the thing, don't that. ingest antifreeze, call poison control. So yeah, yeah right. you want to be super careful about that. There's a lot of just like messy marketing going on. Like, oh, we have the smallest molecule ever. We don't really know what these small molecules are doing. We just really know that the plant in itself works really well. When you emulsify something to make a small molecule, you don't know how they've done it. 
it's not necessarily the best. So um, stick with a full spectrum product that if you can, so if you do full spectrum, you could fail a drug test. If you do a pure one, so we have an isolate that's approved by the Anti-Doping Federation, you may need to take more, some people don't, but the full spectrum kind of bumps it up. Um, but you, you should be aware that it's like eating a poppy seed bagel. You may fail the drug test, so you want to be careful, especially if you live in strict states. Like I do know a story of a woman who was just taking a CBD from a health food store, had some complications during her childbirth, got drug tested, and she tested positive for marijuana from taking her CBD and almost got her baby taken away from her. Like CPS wow. had to come in and this whole thing. So you, you know, got to be mindful. California is super liberal. There's some states where it's not. Like Utah is a zero tolerance state. So if you test positive for any kind of marijuana, even if you were just taking a CBD, even though it is federally legal, you have to be cautious right. and be educated. Overlap the federal laws. So. Yeah. And they will start to change, you know, like now that CBD is federally legal, you can tell on a drug test what someone was ingesting. So the drug tests are getting more sophisticated. You'll be able to tell if it was a CBD, but you know, and you can always address it with your job prior, say like, hey, I'm gonna take this CBD, it's blah, 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 if you have that kind of appropriate relationship, or you can just go with the per pure product and not worry about it at all. Yeah, that's totally good to know. All right. Yeah. All Thank right. you so much. You're welcome. And if anyone wants more information, um, they can visit my site with Chelsea.com and email me. And that's C-H-E-L-S-E-A. And if you guys email me and have more questions, just mention that you heard about it on Christina's podcast and um, we'll make sure that we pair you with the right product. Awesome. Thanks for watching the, or listening to the Hidden Secrets to Health. Take care. Thank you.